Hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Center Court. I have a very special guest who I'm very happy to see, Jonathan Levin, who is the dean of the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Um, Jonathan is really an economist. Uh, he was appointed the 10th dean of the school in September of 2016. Uh, he has his uh, PhD in economics from MIT. He also has a master's in economics from Oxford and two count them to mathematics and English right and left brain. There you go. Uh, from Stanford University. John, welcome. John, great to see you. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us. So let's get right to the heart of the matter. You know, every year there's a new generation of, of prospective students. Uh, some of them sit on the fence. Some of them know they really want to pursue an MBA. What's the value proposition of the MBA today? Is it still worthwhile? Um, is it still a great value for people? Yeah. It's an amazing degree. And the more that I time I spend at uh, business schools and it, the more I come to appreciate it. And, and what I tell people is, you know, actually, you know, as you said, I got a PhD. So it's a very, very different type of education. My graduate education was all about zooming in on the, you know, the, the just becoming an expert in one domain of economics. In fact, even a subdomain of that to write a dissertation. It's like a getting a super powerful microscope to, to, to learn how to do something. And then over your career, you get to broaden that a little bit. And an MBA degree is exactly the opposite. It's this, it, it's this extraordinary opportunity, often in your mid twenties, to come in and just have the world opened up for you in terms of all these new ideas, in terms of all these possible directions you could go with your career. You get to see what it would be like to be an operator, to be an investor, to be a CEO, to run, be in the social sector. And you get the tools to be a leader in any of those areas. It's like a, giving people a powerful telescope. It's an extraordinary opportunity for-, for And the value of it, um is still retained. I mean, there's some people who say, and you know, this is true, and it's been true for a long time. There are naysayers out there about the degree that say, oh, well, if you want to be an entrepreneur, why don't you use, your, use the money you would spend for tuition for your seed capital? Or there are other people who say, well, you know, it's so expensive. It's two years out of your life. The, the world is moving quickly. Uh, it's not the, the same as it was back in the 90s or the 80s. What do you say to that? You know, I think if you if you take a, a narrow frame to the MBA degree and you think about it as you know is this gonna what's the what's the five year ROI or the three year ROI gonna be you know actually it's it's not bad it's pretty good if you look at the increase in yeah. salaries over the time but it, that's not really the way to think about an MBA degree in many many industries now you can play through in finance or in large organizations in consulting you can you, you can you can you can find as an entrepreneur you can find other ways to get some uh, education you know on the internet short programs flexible programs the path to the mba comes over decades it's the things you learn that will be important in your first job but will also be important four jobs on from that and you know i one way i think about it is I have yet to meet an alum who, you know, 40 years out and they say over the 50 years of my career, I really wish I'd spent all 50 working instead of 48 <laughs> of them working and two of them doing um, the degree. <laughs> so not one. And I bet you meet a lot of people who after they graduate wish the MBA program was like another year. Like it's bittersweet when they leave the program. John, we, you know, as, as you know, about one in five students in our MBA program today do a second degree at Stanford. Yeah. And often they do that, although the second degree, whether it's in sustainability or law or medicine or public policy or engineering, that second degree actually, education, that second degree actually requires some extra time. So not only do they think that afterward, some of those students think that while they're on campus and they're, they're you know, they put their nickel down on doing that. And by the way, I think that's a, a, a extraordinary. I, I'm so I think those students get something very special, which is they get this deep domain expertise in an area. You couple that with the management, leadership, entrepreneurship skills you get at a business school. It's a very powerful combination. You don't need a joint degree to do that, but that's a very powerful uh, toolkit 
for anyone who you know, comes to do a, 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 an MBA and takes advantage of the whole university. One thing that I love about business schools and business education is how responsive it is to the market. And right now, uh, you know, obviously one of the big demands in the world is sustainability and, and addressing the issues of climate change and the climate crisis. I wonder what Stanford's doing. I'm sure it's quite a bit. <laughs> so, so the metaphor I'm tempted to use, but I won't because it's completely the wrong one, would be to say that, you know, sustainable, activity and sustainability is sort of on fire at Stanford, but <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> I, so we had this incredible thing happen at Stanford last year, which is we we launched a new school of sustainability. It's the first school, new school at Stanford in 50 years. So it's not like we're just wow. It's not like we're just starting a school every you know every couple of years, and we launched it with you know a, a billion and a half dollars in philanthropy, including more than a billion from from John Doerr, who named the school the Stanford Doerr School of Sustainability. That has created just it's hard to overstate actually how much momentum it's created around sustainability all across the university so last year when the school launched we have we had faculty take joint appointments we have about 70 students doing joint degrees with the door school we had new classes we had conferences all year in the spring we started a, a climate entrepreneurship program an ecopreneurship program that's open to the whole university it's a partnership and just the overall energy and excitement and enthusiasm is uh, is off the charts. And it's, by the way, it's it's great because it's such an important problem, and it's and it's a problem that is going to take a mix of technical innovation to do energy transition, you know, politics, and 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 business innovation and business leadership. And the business innovation, business leadership sometimes gets left out, but that's going to be absolutely critical to you know, making an energy transition and, and fighting climate change over the coming decades. And the significance of actually having a school to do this, I think is pretty great because that means you have budget to attract a large number of faculty who have basically devoted their life to this subject uh, and their research interests as well. Yeah. Just, you know, we, we, business schools actually have some of the same ingredients that need to go into creating a great sustainability school, which is sustainability, you have to come at it as an interdisciplinary problem. Mm -hmm. You need to have you know, people who've got engineering skill and, and social science skill, political science, maybe even a little humanities and ethics uh, in there. And, um, and you want to prepare students you know, using uh, learning knowledge uh, tools from all those disciplines. And that's you know, that's how we think of we all think about business education is that it's a fundamentally interdisciplinary exercise. You you get educated from a whole breadth of perspectives, and that feeds into being a, a good manager, a good leader, um, uh, successful in in a business career. Yep, true. I mean, the other hot issue these days, and there's a lot of conversation about it. Is of course artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, if you want to study AI and you want to understand the impact of it on society and work, I can't imagine a better place at Stanford. <laughs> well, you know, the, it, I have to say it's 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 sort of mind blowing how quickly the technology has advanced and just the difference between if we were having this conversation a year ago when we. There were people who knew about ChatGPT, but it hadn't been released to the world. And now, when we've all played around and seen how powerful these algorithms, these language models are, um, and 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 sort of how good they are at at skills that feel fundamentally human, like synthesizing large amounts of knowledge and then outputting text or pictures or code, um, it it you know really does, it feels like a revolution. Yeah. Uh, a technological revolution and um it's still early days uh of course we'll have to see how it gets incorporated in different businesses and different industries um but with any technological revolution it just creates this disruption this fresh thinking this sense of opportunity possibility the need for some caution in certain areas and that it's just the discussion is everywhere around here. I mean, it's it's 
on campus, it's in the classrooms, it's among the faculty, it's among the students, it's thinking about new companies, it's talking to people in Silicon Valley, it's across campus with the engineers and the, the other folks here at Stanford. And it, it, this year is gonna be a, this is gonna be a big year for AI. It's, for, <laughs> it's a safe I'm, bet to say. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the advantages obviously is your location. Uh, a lot of VC money is getting poured into AI. There are a lot of startups in the Valley on AI. Um, some people even say it, we may be approaching bubble status. I don't really know how true that is. But uh, I think one of the great things about Stanford is the fact that you not only have world-class spectacular faculty, but you have this incredible environment to draw upon uh, leading thinkers, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs uh, who are in the trenches doing it. And I wonder if you might talk about how you use, you know, the external experts uh, and bring them onto the campus with your great faculty to do something special. Yeah. Well, as you know, and that, that's an element of the school that I'm really proud of at Stanford is the, is the way we integrate academic thinking, great scholars, social scientists, um, Nobel laureates with, uh, with um, practitioners and business leaders who come in and they bring a, a, a you know, they bring the seasoned judgment and wisdom and on the ground experience uh, that is hugely important for students. And you know, one of the things that we do at Stanford that um, you know, we've really uh, expanded over the years is to is to is to have classes where you pair academics and practitioners. Mm. And we do that in different ways. We have co-teaching classes where you have two you, you, people teach together. So you might have, for example, an, an accounting faculty member who's an expert in merger and acquisitions. Uh, Ron Kasnick teaches a class with Safra Katz, who's the CEO of Oracle, who's done a lot of mergers and acquisitions in the course of her career. And that then students get to hear about, you know, how does it look from an academic perspective? What does the data show? What's it like to actually go acquire a company? How do you think about that? And how do you do that 100 times? Uh, how do you set that up? So we do a lot of classes like that, and we do a lot of classes where the faculty bring in speakers just you know, to talk about particular things, global investing or entrepreneurship. And a lot of practitioners will come in and coach and mentor students. And, and so we try to go about that in a way that um, students get the, the kind of rigor, the use of data, the frameworks to think clearly, think critically, but they also get a little glimpse of what's going on in practice and you know, hopefully a little glimpse of the future if you get some people in who can really help inspire and, and uh, look around corners. Yeah, that's a really strong combination too, I think. Um, now, you had spent most of your early academic career in economics and in the economics department uh, that you chaired at one point. And when you went to business school in 2016, although you had something of a joint appointment and you were in and out of there, uh, you're mainly in the economics department. And I wonder, you know, now that you've been there a number of years, uh, if there's some surprising things that you discovered about the business school itself and its mission uh, that maybe you didn't realize when you were in the economics department at Stanford. Well, one is I fell in love with MBA education. That, so that I, you know, that, that I, that I didn't, that I, that I learned about and fell in love with when I came here. And I just, I, I, love, I like I said at the beginning, I just, I just think an MBA degree is an extraordinary uh, a way to, to, to learn and, and set yourself up for a great career. The, the other thing which we, it relates to what we just talked about is, I mean, as you know, I, I spent my entire life around universities, not just at Stanford and the economics department. I yes. grew up around one spend an inordinate amount of time getting educated uh, in different, different degrees, as you mentioned, in my, my, my degrees. And uh, there's, there's just no place in the world like the Stanford Business School. It, it's, um, it's partly the people. It's this mix of brilliant thinkers, aspirational students, this flow of people coming across the campus, whether it's people from Silicon Valley or all over business or government leaders or faculty or students from around the university. So this kind of mix of people. And then a lot of it is the culture, actually. 
it's this, it has a, just this very special culture of, of openness, of collaboration, of you know, positive, optimistic thinking, of you know, being forward-looking, entrepreneurial, innovative. You know, our motto, which is, um, which has a lot of truth to it, is yep. the school's all about changing lives, changing organizations, changing the world. Yep, you're, uh, I mean, it's all about impact and having impact in the MBA and what you learn in it and the people you meet in it and who will support and help you throughout your entire career. Um, basically, you're aligning the stars to have the most possible impact you could have with your life. Um, I often think of also the MBA as not only a professional degree, but very much a degree uh, that involves personal development and, and the creation of self-confidence, not cockiness, but self-confidence, which is extremely important to success in business. Do you agree? We 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 try we say we try to we, we say that it, everyone says this, but I actually believe that we do this <laughs> when we do execute well in MBA programs. That education is transformational. Yes, and um, that that is the ex experience that I see in so many of our students. And that transformation can happen in a lot of different ways. For some students, it's they come in, they don't know anything about business because they've been working in a nonprofit or they were a journalist or they were in government, they were in the military. And wow, this is a tool, like this is a set, way, a set of ways of thinking and a toolkit that is it's just empowering in this in, in this in this uh, very special way. For other students, it's um, it, it has to do with their aspirations. You know, Rishi Sunak, the prime minister of the UK, has was quoted after he, you know, uh, at some point he was still on the way to becoming prime minister about what did, what did Stanford give you in the MBA program? And he said, it raised my sights. Mm. It made, gave me bigger aspirations. Um, and for some students, you know, just like you, like you say, it, it helps them establish the confidence they see okay, this is what it would be like to be an entrepreneur, to, to be a leader of a team, to be a leader of an organization, to be an investor, and I could do it. I actually have talked, seen people what it takes to do is I have the tools and I could, I could do that. And that's, a, that's really important, uh, you know, when you're launching off in your career to feel that sort of confidence. Not that you, you can do it right now necessarily, Right. You'll be able to figure it out. You'll 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 be able to acquire the skills and work toward it and get better and get there uh, over time. And and that that is a that's a gift for many people early in their careers. And and I see a lot of people walking away from the MBA program with with exactly Indeed. that. Indeed. You navigated the pandemic, which was um, tricky for everybody. Um, but looking back so far on your deanship, what are you most proud of? Um, many, many things actually, uh, but, um, you, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think I always say that the, that sort of basically uh, running an academic institution is, uh, and I've said it to you, John, it's, it's, you know, it's not complicated that, that basically you just go out and you get great faculty and you get great students and you try to get them the resources you need, they need, and then you get out of their way. And. I'm, I'm really proud of some of the things that the school has accomplished that I have wanted to see the school accomplish, like interact, engaging with the university, being more global, getting ahead in sustainability and AI and technology, new courses, new programs, all that. But by far the thing I'm most proud of is just seeing all the things that the faculty and the students and the alumni have accomplished that, that were largely the result of me getting out of their way and just letting them <laughs> do the great things they're capable of. Well, you were wise enough to get out of their way, I suppose, and also obviously providing resources uh, for important ideas uh, and important initiatives is also a, a key part of your role. Um, are there specific programs or centers or I know you've, you've had a great track record in, in luring fantastic faculty uh, to Stanford over the time that you've been dean. Um, other things like that that you're really proud of? We've got some really exciting stuff going on right now. We've got the the partnership with the Doris School on Sustainability. We've got a, this year going to have a lot of stuff on AI, like we talked about. We've got a, a um, 
we've got a new, we actually are teaching, this is for the undergraduate, we're going to offer new, a set of classes this year for undergraduates, which I think is going to feed back in a beautiful way into the MBA program because it's spurring a lot of new thinking about um, class design and, and so forth. Um, I think it'll foster a lot of con more connection with the with the rest of uh, Stanford University. Um, we've been, you know, continuing to sort of expand globally uh, in a whole range of ways, and um, you know, and most importantly, we're, we just keep working to attract a set of students who are extraordinary, and a set of faculty who are extraordinary, and. Uh, and and let them be as you know creative and innovative as, as possible when they're here. Does that mean a minor in business for undergraduates, or not quite a minor? No, we're you know we're doing something actually that's quite quite different. Uh, it's an experiment. Uh, we're, we 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 decided that we see, like I said earlier, we see our students in the MBA program coming in, and and also in our MSX program coming in, and while they're here really taking advantage of going out and learning around the university mm. and taking other classes in all, all, in all different domains. And like I said before, that combination, that mix of sort of domain expertise is really being grounded on a topic or an issue uh, with you know, the management and the leadership, the entrepreneurship, the investing skills, you get an MBA, you put that together and it's dynamite. And what we realized is we're, we're, we actually don't really have any opportunities for people to come the opposite direction and sort of do it with it with the other mix and um and so we thought well, well let's offer some classes that would allow students from across stanford to to do that um but we we're, let's not we're not going to teach basic business classes actually because they can get that in other ways and we want to do things that are really going to light the fire for the faculty so we told the faculty just whatever you want to dream up and teach let's offer a set of classes and um it'll be all about how do you take ideas uh, into practice, because business, you know, fundamentally, business is the way ideas get translated into action in the world. So let's have that be the theme, and we'll, you know, we'll we'll kind of reimagine what a business education looks like as part of a broader liberal education. So really, it's about innovation, and and how does innovation get done? Exactly, that's that's right, and this is and and we, you know, and this is also a, an impetus. You know, whenever we introduce a new program at at the at the GSB, we always ask the question of how is this going to complement the core programs? Mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we, it's going to take some faculty time to do some research. So we want to we want to always bring in programs that are going to be great for the school, create impact, be exciting, but fundamentally going to feed back into the core programs and and make them stronger. And we thought this would be a great way to kind of experiment, do some innovation. And maybe the faculty end up teaching a section for the university, but then they teach a section for the MBA students. And we've already got one of our business sustainability classes that that's we're one year ahead in that process and that, and it's it's terrific. And uh, and it adds you know, just add to the mix of kind of excitement and energy uh, around the school. So that that'll be an experiment for this year, and I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah, no, that that sounds fantastic. I can I can bet that. Those courses are going to be oversubscribed immediately <laughs> uh, at Stanford uh, from your undergraduates, for sure. So um, in, just looking ahead, how do you see business education evolving over the next five years? Are we going to see more emphasis on sustainability, artificial intelligence, diversity and inclusion? Is there something else on the horizon that we're not quite seeing yet? Well, what do you think? Yes to all of those things. I mean, business education is always have you always have to be thinking about you know what what are the issues that business leaders are facing now and how do we how do you prepare students for them? And so, in addition to giving them you know, fundamental critical thinking skills, leadership skills, and so forth, you want to you want to prepare people for what are the substantive issues of the of the day. And you just named you know three of them. Um, I, but I also think there's there's a there are interesting. Um, you know, overall changes in MBA education. One of the big ones that I have seen here happening over a number of years is um, in a sort of uh, historic or in some sense sort of stereotypical thinking about MBA education, the MBA was, you know, a rung on the ladder as you kind of progressed along your, your career in this vertical way. And, um, 
That has really changed because of the proliferation of alternatives to MBA education and the and the and the private sector doing its own training programs and wanting to retain talent. And so there's a there's kind of a broader change in in MBA education, which is that um, is is that business schools are having to embrace the idea that we talked about before, which is that we need to welcome students from a very wide range of backgrounds and think about them going off in a very, very wide range of directions and have the educational part, the experience at the school be all about, you know, how do you take advantage of that in tremendous diversity of the people in the class and give everybody an opportunity to sort of go out and identify and pursue different aspirations and different career paths and, and so forth. And um, I, I think we're going to see more and more that if you look at sort of trajectories through the MBA, we're, we're going to see, you know, we're, we're going to over time in five years, I think we'll see even more of that uh, yeah. than we do now. I mean, in a way, it's become an all purpose degree um, in the way that law degrees had been in the past. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a sense in which you know, we're the Stanford Graduate School of Business, but we're also the Graduate School of Organizations or mm -hmm. the Graduate School of Leadership. And those are all true. <laughs> exactly. So, John, last question. What's your advice to someone out there who's thinking about getting an MBA, isn't quite sure? Uh, how, how do they make themselves certain that this is a degree that would be invaluable to them? One, of course, is to to go out and 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 talk to people who have been through an MBA degree, try to get a sense of, you know, why did they do it? What did they gain from it? Ask, talk to people who aren't just four years out, but who are 20 or 30 years out. Mm. Uh, and and I think the most important thing is to just take a long view of, yeah. of a decision. You know, go, going for a, a graduate education of any kind, but but particularly you know the, the MBA degree, because it's not a gatekeeper to get to your next job. Right. It, it's really important to think about what do you want the, your career. You, you're going to work. You're going to you're going to have 50 years of work, maybe even longer, depending on what we happens to human longevity. Think about 50 years from now. Will this have been something that you? value doing and and I think that that is that makes it much easier to to decide to to invest in yourself and and go get a graduate degree go get a business degree then um, you know if you sort of worry too much about what's the next year going to look like yeah that's so true because too many people you know look at the starting salaries and the employment reports when the true value of the degree is a long-term uh, value it's not it's it's not the, the immediate job you get after you get out of uh, business school and it's not your starting salary or sign on bonus it's so much more than that uh, absolutely right and by the way it, that that mindset is not just important for it, for the students it's important for the schools because <laughs> if you if you're sort of optimized on where the student's going to be in two years you're missing the point of what you're trying to do which is to remove the ceiling uh, and, true. and see so what true. we're going to get in 30 or 40 years Really good point. Now you don't regret not having an MBA, do you? I wish I could go back and do an MBA. I, I'm, 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 <laughs> you're, you're you're naturally a lifelong student anyway. You're, you're learning every single day. I love going into classes and sort of seeing what's going on and and uh, being being around the students. They're incredibly inspiring and uh, um, and you know I I probably wouldn't get into the MBA program now, but it's uh, like oh saying. I got that. <laughs> But uh, for those of you out here who don't know, for those of you who don't know, uh, actually, Dean Levin has, um, has a baby bell. And uh, if he decided not to be an administrator uh, in his career and made that detour, I have no doubt he would have been on a pathway toward an actual Nobel Prize. So I think he would have had a very easy time getting into an MBA program at Stanford. <laughs> Oh, well, well, hey, when I, when, I, when I meet our students that it, it, you said before, the whole point of the program is we give a lot, we give people a lot of confidence. Sometimes when you meet the students, it sort of goes the opposite direction. They so, are incredibly exceptional, aren't they? It's oh, remarkable. it's, 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 a, it's, it, it's, a, it, 
one, the students are exceptional, but but the other thing that, and this is just, I think, true about MBA programs is it, because people in MBA programs are can go out in so many different directions, it, like being around MBA students who are um, you know, thinking really ambitious about their careers, it's just energizing and fun because they all sort of have different aspirations and different ways they're going about it and a lot of energy and passion to, to get there. And that's, we're about to bring the students back. They come in September because we're on a quarter schedule and we start a right. little bit. But it's my favorite day of the year when the students come. And, and the reason my favorite day of the year is because there's just this like influx of energy and it's this sense of renewal. Like we're just starting fresh and here they are and you just feel that energy and that's you know i'm looking forward to that hugely and everyone who's thinking about an nba program you could just look forward to that day it's great it's a great day when the energy starts incredible um jonathan thank you so much for doing this really appreciate it great luck in the future you don't really need it but we really we uh appreciate your insights and your time john thanks so much it's always a pleasure to talk to you and i uh, really appreciate getting the chance to be on your uh on your show all righty so for all of you out there, we've been talking to Jonathan Levin, the Dean of the Stanford Graduate School of Business, star economist at Stanford. And who knows, I know you're gonna go back to research because I know that you love research and you know his specialty is price theory, um, among other things. And uh, I bet you can't wait to go back as a professor someday um, because that's your true love, that's your true passion, but you've done an amazing job as Dean of the Stanford School. So congrats on that. Great, thanks so much, John. All right, and for all of you out there, thanks for watching. This is John Byrne with Quotes and Quotes.